our scripture today comes from the book of John. The Gospel of John. There are, there are several books of John. you got to watch out. There's the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, and then there's 1 John, 2 John, the letters of John. These are two different. This one comes from the Gospel of John. And in that Gospel, we find written the most beautiful prayers and words of Jesus to his followers. So today we're reading from John 15, verses 9 through 17. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Note that there's only one. That you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. Because you, I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, happy Mother's Day. Yeah. I say happy Mother's Day to all because, well, not every woman has born children. And we've become more attuned to, the, to being sensitive to this. That for some, Mother's Day is a hard day because either they have never been able to have children or they've lost their children, their children have died. So, we all had a mother. We all knew the love of a mother, I hope. At least we know we had a mother. And for some of us, we had other mothers. We had extra moms. God blesses us with those extra mothers that fill that wonderful place in our lives. We, we wish blessings to all the parent figures in our lives. They have been very important to us. They are the people that have reminded us that we are loved, even when we aren't perfect. They're reminders to us of the gracious love of God the Father. They've made room for us at the table and gave us a sense that we are always welcome there, no matter what. In today's reading from John 15, that gospel with the most eloquent prayers and words of Jesus, we hear Jesus' commandment that we love one another to the point of laying down one's life for one's friends as we abide in his love. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was an adolescent, <laughs> uh, my relationship with my mother was, shall we say, tumultuous. Didn't always go smoothly. Uh, that was about the same time that God supplied me with my other mother. Now, this was kind of a package deal. She came along with my best friend in middle school and high school. Their home became that place where I could just be. I could just be me away from the drama of my parents and all the stuff that was going on there and that adolescent thing that moms and daughters get. And my friend's house became a place of refuge, a place of peace where I could go and, and hang out, and on Saturday nights, we always did sleepovers, and we'd stay up late watch, trying to watch Creature Feature, which I confess I never saw the end of because I always fell asleep early. Um, we'd have root beer and, and Cheez-Its and, and sleeping on the living floor. It was, that was fun. But it was also formative because after that sleepover, Sunday morning, I went to church with them they became my connection to the United Methodist Church. 
they're how I became a Methodist. So God used that family to help shape my faith and my faith journey. Now, for the longest time, I was grateful for my best friend. She was like a sister to me. But now I also appreciate the love that her parents shared with me. I can see God's fingerprints all over that chapter of my life. And it helps me understand the nature and and the working of God the Father. Kind of the way Jesus illuminates that. God's love is apparent as we see this pattern of creating us and calling us and claiming us and forgiving us and saving us. God's love is apparent as we consider the gift that he gave us in Jesus Christ, who, who gave his very life for us, that we could have a chance, an opportunity, to know how much we are loved, despite our human egos and imperfections. As we have become a mobile society, we find that our families are all spread out. Less and less often will you find multiple generations living in the same community, let alone living under the same roof anymore. Families are now spread across the country and even across the globe. We are all spread out. And this creates a need for which God has already created the solution. You are there. Now, in ages past, people didn't move as much, but people also didn't live as long. Families were not were diminished, not because they moved away for a job, but because they died at earlier ages. Widows and orphans are spoken frequently of in the Bible. And I think God created the church to be the community that connects people in love and care. Widows, orphans, parents whose children live far away, uh, grandchildren whose grandparents live far away, and every permutation of that. We have grad students who are here living in a different country from their families. doesn't mean they love them any less. They're just separated. But the good news is, with technology today, they can get out their phones or their iPads and, and see each other and converse. It's a wonderful thing. So God created the church to be the extended family for us. An extended family where there is always room at the table and we don't have to be perfect to be welcome. Our open table that the United Methodist Church celebrates is part of why I decided to be a United Methodist pastor. You don't have to be baptized and you don't have to be a member of this church to take communion in our church doesn't mean that we don't want you eventually to get baptized as your journey leads on, but all are welcome at Christ's table. Um, People people get funny. They they think that, that churches are the place where perfect people congregate. And, and I think that's where we, we kind of slipped up. Somewhere along the line, they got the impression that you had to be perfect first before you could belong to a church, before you could come for communion, before you could be welcome. And, and sometimes they thought that Christians are somehow exempt from the human temptations, the, the, the conflict, and, and that any church that experiences discord in, in the life of the church must be doing something wrong, that there's a reason, there's a flaw somehow. And too frequently, the solution is to separate. Either the church itself splits or you leave that church. And, you know, that splitting apart, rather than staying and working through the issue by speaking the truth in love, offering forgiveness and seeking reconciliation. These are the, the methods that God hopes we will use to be the church. So, lucky for us, God never went along with that idea that you and I must first live perfect lives and then we will be worthy to be saved. No, it didn't work that way. 
Christ died for us while we're, we were yet sinners. Those are the words that we say every time we take communion. He didn't require us to be perfect to give his life for us. He loves us exactly as we are. He loves us right where we are. And we confess that we are still impatient. We get greedy. We get jealous. We get angry. You can name any list of sins you want. And we're still loved and called to love one another, even with those things. What God hopes is that in the course of working through those issues, we will come to embrace and embody the mind of Christ. That as we get more and more spiritually mature, we will get past that surface pettiness and think first of forgiveness. Think first of reconciliation of being the body of Christ. Christ welcomed all and called all of us to follow in his footsteps out of a life filled with things that separate us from God and into a life of unity with God and with our neighbors. Jesus calls us brothers and sisters. We are all the children of God who created us with a purpose. A purpose of loving God and loving one another. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a task before us. We must use our gifts that God has given us for the benefit of Christ's church. Leaders must lead. Generous people must give. Teachers must teach, healers heal, prophets prophesy, encouragers encourage, servants serve. Those with gifts of wisdom and administration and apostleship guide our congregation. And while none of us has all of those gifts, all of us have something to contribute. God has birthed in each and every one of you something that you're good at. Have you ever known that person who just has that way of always having a kind word and speaking something encouraging to you? What a gift that can be. It didn't cost them a thing. It wasn't hard. It was just in their nature. And then there are other people that that's not their forte. But they have something entirely different that's just as useful and just as helpful. In Christian love and compassion... We can lift one another up in prayer and call on Jesus Christ to give us faith. Faith strong enough to get us through this postmodern age of transition. Everywhere you go, you read articles about the church and how church is dying and church is crumbling and, and this and that. And I'm here to tell you today that the church of God will never die. It will never die. Because our God is bigger The churches that die have stopped making new disciples. The churches that die have gone through this life cycle and instead of catching a new vision while they're on that downward slope, getting them back over to the other side so they can revision and reinvent themselves, they've let it go because they didn't want to change. Well, guess what? Change is a part of life. We all are in the midst of it. We get older. doesn't matter. You know, we grow up. We go to college. We get a career. We do this. Life is always changing. Our staff is changing as people are moving for new jobs, going off to seminary, retiring. It happens. But I think God has given us this congregation, this body of Christ, both the people here today, the people who were in first service, and two weeks from now we're going to be all together upstairs at 10 o'clock. Don't forget, put that on your calendar. Because he has a task for us. To create a fellowship that provides extension.
extended family, not just extended biological family by marriage, but extended family as the family of Christ. The love that God has for us is mirrored in the parent's love for her children. We may long to protect our kids, like that mother hen who would shelter her young under her wings, but we know we cannot always control them, can we? For they have been given, just as we were, that gift of free will, that gift of autonomy and and needing to make our own choices, our own path in life. And we as parents just pray, God, help them make the right choices. Now, as I've watched that impish young man grow up, there were times I was tearing my hair out, Tom too. We didn't know what was going to happen, but turning out all right. You know, I thank God for him every day. And I choose to pray for him and I, I hope he chooses wisely. All we can do as parents is to model good habits of living and to celebrate those moments when we are asked to share our faith. Because it's in those moments, those teachable moments, that they've opened the door. They're ready to hear what we have to say. They're ready to hear our story. And those are the most important moments of all when somebody significant, like a parent, shares their faith with their child. We can make a place at our table, too, for those other children. And I would invite other parents, other grandparents, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews. We can be like that to one another. Because those are all people that God sends us as we become one fellowship of love in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm sad to say church will never be drama free. Just, we got to get over it. Church will never be drama free. There's always going to be something right? It's always something. Change happens whether we want it to or not. The key is to find the right leaders to lead and to develop a habit of gracious love and forgiveness. That's going to take us a long way on that path to being and making new disciples for Jesus. Now, we have to be careful because we can't tolerate so much disharmony and, uh, you know, parking lot conversations that are disruptive to the life of the church because when visitors come it's like static in the air they can feel it so we have to find ways to to speak honestly and openly and learn to trust one another and and realize that yeah okay there's going to be some conflict there's going to be change there's going to be drama but we're going to work our way through this it's going to be okay I learned many lessons from my mother and my grandmother. Some of them, sad to say, were what not to do. Yeah, we all have that. Um, But some of the things that I learned were truly best practices. And the one that I named for you today, probably the most valuable lesson of all, was knowing when to just listen and not not put in my two cents worth, but just listen, not say anything, not react, just listen. And then to pray for them, to pray for their time of learning, their, their needs, encouraging their steps toward maturity, and to love them no matter what. Now, don't get me wrong, I didn't always get a yes things that I asked for, and I didn't always get approval, but I always, always knew that they loved me. I always knew they loved me. May each and every one of you feel that kind of love 
for your children, from your children, between each other. May we be the giant extended family of God. May that love of God be felt in your heart and in your family this day. Amen. I don't know if we have any purple prayer cards. Lily's a little short. She's almost there. Claire's going to look for us. <laughs> Purple prayer slips are, are handy. You know, we have a, a, a kind of... None there? Okay. A contemporary service, but we are still family. We still want to be connected and get to know each other. And, and knowing what to pray for is important. Um, Wilma Blackman was in church this morning, first service, so... You know, she's coming along, and Glenn is home from the hospital. It's been quite the week. And, and Les Kepper's here. Oh, yay, getting better. And Tom Gordon's here, healing up from his hamstring injury. And my, my arm's getting better. You know, healing happens. Thank God, healing happens. So let's take all of that healing and all of that love to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and awesome God, we pray this day for our mothers who have given life and love to us. We pray that we may show them reverence and love enough to make up for all those times that we weren't so (laughs) loving to them. Forgive us. We know they have forgiven us. Lord, we pray for mothers who've lost a child to death. We pray for Pastor Daniel and Almeida down at Lincoln Road Church who had to bury two children this past week. We pray for their families, their mothers especially. Give them comfort and faith and hope. And let their family and friends surround them with support, consolation, Hugs, food, nurturing, whatever they need, Lord, give it to them. Lord, we pray for women who, though without children of their own, have that nurturing spirit. They are mothers to others. They've nurtured us and cared for us. They are teachers. They are wonderful women. Help them find that path in their lives to peace and to wholeness. For mothers who have not been able to be a source of strength to their children, who have not been able to respond with love and care and have not sustained their families, Lord, we pray that you help their children find other mothers Lead them, guide them, give them peace as they grow and help them understand what happened, why she wasn't able to, and to love her still. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Lord, we pray especially this day for mothers who are separated by many, many miles from their children, especially the ones whose children or the mother herself is serving in the military. Keep them safe. Help them to make connections and to love one another across the miles. Help us all to be in love the way a mother loves for every child around the world that we may be ambassadors of justice and good education good health care and safety.
for children. Lord, you've guided us all these years. We trust that you'll guide us in the days and years to come. Now we pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's time.